This is a Facebook post from 2013. I was so excited to announce to my friends and family that I had just landed one of the raddest internships with the National FFA organization. And I was going to be living it up in Washington, DC for an entire summer. But this post is actually more significant for other reasons. If you're looking at it, you can see this is the post that got the most likes and comments of anything that I ever posted on social media before. I loved the encouragement and the validation that I was getting from people's reactions. I felt worth and I felt cared for. Social media has become a part of our everyday conversations. And there's one conversation that I don't think we have enough, and it's time to address it. As an agricultural education major, I can't even count the number of conversations that I had about how social media affects the self-worth of high school students. But like I said, there's a different conversation that needs to be had. I know I experienced more self-worth because of the reactions I got from this Facebook post. But I felt cared for. That means someone was caring for me through social media. So we talk about social media and people and the receiving end of things, but we don't talk about it on the giving end. What do I mean by this? I mean that social media has created a brand new avenue for caring about people, things, humanitarian needs, social injustices, environmental issues, anything. It's really created a new avenue. The problem is, I don't really see this as a good thing. We are often talked about as a generation that has the most potential to make a true difference in the world. And that's because of our access to information, resources, and our general perspective on life. But when we make social media the maximum effort that we put forward to care about people, I really think that hinders us. And I really think we have forgotten what it means to care. If we are going to be that generation that truly makes a difference in the world, it's time that we find this new definition of what it means to care. I found that you need four things to truly care about something. Direction, courage, sacrifice, and action. Direction. As we scroll through our news feeds, we see post after post after post, and we are inundated with all kinds of information. We quickly realize that there are so many things to care about. Honestly, it's overwhelming. And I've seen this overwhelmed feeling lead to two different types of reactions. One, we kind of dabble around a little bit here and there and do a little bit for a lot of things where in the end, it's hard to tell that actually anything's been accomplished. Reaction number two, we are so overwhelmed by all of the problems that are put in front of us and all of those tasks that we just shut down and don't do anything about it. I know I've done this. I see a huge to-do list and I'm like, the world is gonna keep on turning whether I get that done or not, so I'm just not gonna do any of it. <laughs> but the thing is, we need to find some kind of middle ground where we realize it's okay to be aware of everything, but we need to actually care about just a few things. So when I first sought out different avenues to move around the world, I went to a specific conference to learn more about one organization. When I got there, I walked in, I grabbed my name tag from the registration table, went into the room and attempted to make some small talk, but finally, it was time to start. Of course, the first thing we did was go around the room one by one, introducing all of ourselves, um, and that meant all 30 of us. So we went around. Hi, my name is John, and I look forward to work with the Berbers of North Africa. Hey, I'm Ben, and I want to work with tribal groups that are on the outskirts of the Amazon in Peru. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I want to work with human trafficking victims in Western Europe. Last but not least, yours truly. Hi, I'm Sabrina, and I guess I'm just checking things out. I don't really know what I'm doing yet. Um, yep. Literally, every single person there had a name tag with their name on it, and then a location underneath. Mine read Sabrina Kieser, and underneath said undesignated, because I literally had no idea what I was going to do next. Throughout the rest of the conference, I was overwhelmed with possibilities. 
I came to realize pretty quickly that there are so many places and so many people and so many different causes that I could be a part of. How in the world am I supposed to pick just one of these? I care about all of these. No. This is a little dance that our brain does when we're put with a lot of problems all in front of us all at one time. We feel like we need to do it all, but we don't. We have to pick a direction. Eventually, I found a direction. And now, in just a few months, I am moving to East Asia, ready or not. But I could not be more excited for it. I realized that I needed to pick a direction, but I wasn't OK with making that decision until I realized I can't do it all. Social media tells us that we need to do it all, or that we can do it all. Social media tells us that if we don't care about everything, that means we're not actually good people. Social media also makes us feel like we can do everything. Because I put this filter on my profile picture, or I liked this post, or I shared this article that invoked empathy. That means I must care, right? No. We need to go from realizing that that is just being aware and not truly caring. We need to be guilt-free from choosing a specific direction and investing into that wholeheartedly. We need to find direction. So after we have direction, next up is courage. Believe it or not, it's actually harder than we think it is to have the courage to step out of the social norms, or even just have the courage that it takes to step out of your own comfort zone so that you can truly care about someone. When I tell people that I'm moving to East Asia, as you can imagine, I get a variety of reactions. Some say, that is absolutely crazy, but how awesome. Others follow with, Wow, that is so amazing. How long are you going to be there? No matter what that initial conversation is, it almost inevitably leads to the statement, wow, you are so brave. Let's sidetrack for a minute. At first, I agreed. OK, yeah, maybe I'm brave. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> but as time went on, I realized and had to ask myself, why? Why does this make me brave? Why does finding a need, caring about that need, and then doing something about it make me a brave person? Because I actually think it takes way more bravery to meet someone, to really get to know them, to laugh with them, eat with them, learn more about their life and interact with them, and then to just turn the other direction and say, sorry, I'm going to ignore that for now. I think it takes way more guts to look someone in the eye and to tell them that my own comforts, my own time, conveniences, finances, that is way more important to me than they are. But maybe that's the problem. We don't have to look these people in the eye anymore. We get to read about their problems on a screen and then keep on scrolling as if we never even read it. We can't do that. We need to have the right kind of courage. The kind of courage that allows us to get out from behind that screen and realize that we have the ability, we have the time, the talents, and the heart that it takes to truly care about those people. We can't allow social media to give us this scapegoat for caring, to feel like we've cared about everything, and like we have the courage to face the problems of this world. We need to find the true definition of what it means to be brave. So we've got direction, we've got courage, and now it is time for the kind of touchy subject. It's time to make some sacrifices. The idea of making a sacrifice is something that our culture, I think our culture really struggles with. We work so hard for everything, and we think we've earned everything that we have, and we're afraid to give it away. But in reality, if we care about something, that means we're passionate about it. And if we're passionate about it, that means that we need to be willing to sacrifice for whatever that thing is. So what kind of sacrifices do we make? Let's look at some numbers. And being college students, it's not really fair to look at the numbers of our finances. But we can agree that time is an equal resource for everyone. Digital trend studies tell us that the average American spends two hours a day watching TV. So if you multiply that two hours by 365 days a year, that means we have watched 730 hours for 30 straight days worth of TV in a year, an entire month. All right, maybe you're not someone that watches TV, but maybe you're one of those people that looks at their phone. 
Those same digital trend studies tell us that people our age spend about four hours a day looking at their phone for whatever reason. If you do the math on that, quickly realize that is 60 days out of the year, two whole months spent looking at our phones. That's depressing. So let's look at the brighter side of things. The National Philanthropic Studies tell us that last year, Americans donated 7.9 billion hours of their time. That is pretty incredible. Or is it? I think we have to take into account the fact that there are 64.5 million adults in the US. So if we divide up those 7.9 billion hours by how many people there are committing those hours, it quickly dwindles down to 122 hours, or just five days per person. Don't get me wrong, that's awesome. Five days of your life each year dedicated to serving, go for it. But when we compare it to the amount of time that we're sitting behind a screen or engaged in media, it really does not seem like very much. Five days versus three months out of the year, I think we can do better. So let's evaluate our lives and figure out what does it mean for me to make a sacrifice, to show that I truly care? Is it going to be money? Is it going to be time, comfort, my own opinions? Whatever it is, sacrifice is a part of the equation. So we've nailed down those first three. Last but not least, we've got action. Action, no matter who you are, is the final part of this equation of what it means to care. Without taking physical action, none of those other things matter. Absolutely none of it because you haven't taken the physical action you need to do to show that you truly care. I care about these people, and I care about their well-being, their education, and their spiritual needs, so I am literally packing up my stuff and physically moving to them to meet them where they are. We can't allow social media to be this scapegoat for feeling like we've acted, feeling like we've cared, when really, it's only creating awareness. So, we have what we need, right? We've got those four parts. But social media is still there. Social media has dramatically altered our lives, whether we realize it or want to accept it or not. It has not only transformed the way that we care about people, but it has tran or transformed the way that we care. It has transformed the way that we care about other people, or things, or causes, or anything. We need to go from people being people that are aware to being people that truly care. We need to identify what direction we want. We need to identify what it means to have courage, what kind of sacrifices we're willing to make, and what kind of action steps we need to take. Behind me, I've had this thing going for a while. Some of you looked at it for like a minute and then decided, eh, I don't really care. I'm just going to forget about it and listen to what she's saying. And some of you have been sitting there absolutely puzzled and bothered by the fact that you cannot figure out what in the world is going on. Well, now you can relax, because I'm going to tell you what it means. So the first number, that is the number of people that have tweeted just since I've started talking. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of those tweets came from this very room. The next number, that is the number of posts shared on Facebook since I watched, walked onto this stage. I'd say that's pretty incredible. But this, this is where it gets real. The third number represents the number of people that have died from malnutrition just around the world while we've been sitting here. Next, victims of hate crimes. Last number, the number of people that have been so fed up with, with what's going on around them or feel like no one really cares so they decided to end their own life. Just in the time that we've been in this room. I'm afraid that we're getting caught up in this virtual world. And we're forgetting about the fact that there are real people out there. These are not just numbers. They are real people in a real world with real problems. And I think we also forget that we have the ability to care about them. I just have a hard time believing that social media or anything that we post on it is going to be what saves these people's lives. Because you know what? Uh, number 191, maybe her name was Claire. Maybe she has some brothers that are soon going to suffer the same fate she did. Number six, maybe that's your neighbor. You could have done something about that. 
Number eight, that was someone's friend, brother, sister, mother, father, that didn't feel like they were cared about. We are better than this. And we can do better than this because we have what it takes to care. We need to be people with direction, people with the right kind of courage, people that are willing to make a sacrifice, and people that are absolutely ready to take action. Let's be people that really care.